Today is Sunday. Uh, been hauling sand all day today, and we got the sand room pretty full. Uh, it's pretty much up to the wall there. We will, in the winter time, bring the sand all the way up to here, almost up to the door. But uh, I'll do that later, a little closer to when winter's gonna come, probably late October, early November. That's when we'll huck this room completely full. It's a little bit annoying when the sand room is completely full. That's why it just makes sense to wait until we have to do that. There's very little room to park the bucket, the bed buster, the two skid steers in there when the sand room is full. And uh, just, it's not necessary to load it that full right now. But that's how much we want to get in there. This is going to give us plenty of sand to get to that date when we do actually want to fill it completely full. Uh, we definitely needed to put sand in here though. The beds again were pretty empty. Dima, you'll see him come by here right away. He's throwing sand in the beds right away as soon as I was putting it in there. So. There he goes. see comments in the comment section of these videos saying I should clean that skid steer. I made a video of that once before. I don't know, you guys can go back and check it out if you want. It's probably close to two years old now. But uh, we never clean that skid steer. It goes up and down the manure alleys in the barn. It's uh, the one piece of equipment on this farm that we don't really keep clean at all. We just clean it once a week around all the grease cirques and keep it greased and maintenance properly. But otherwise we just never clean that thing. Uh, just gonna get dirty right away as soon as we clean it. And I made a video of that already, just uselessly cleaning it because you guys are making those comments. But let's go see him toss the sand in the beds. Yeah, you can see these beds really needed that extra sand tossed in there. You can even see the concrete right here. Well, that was Demo putting bedding in the beds. Uh, we'll do the other half tomorrow morning. Gonna have to clean the sand room up now. You can see there's all sand still by the edges of the doors. And uh, on the pad out here, I'll do that all with the Bobcat. It's a little more agile than the wheel loader. And I probably have less of a chance of breaking something using it. Got the truck back to the yard and we saw there was a little bit of sand hung up in the loader bucket but i opened this truck box up and this is a nice surprise for the end of the day it's pretty much spotless i got the shovel here but i don't need to use it at all there's no sand hung up in the box at all that is nice 
It sucks when there's a bunch hung up in there. I think that has to do with the sand being so dry. It just wasn't moist. It wasn't sticky at all today. And nothing got hung up in the box, so awesome. It is the next day and we're gonna finish putting the rest of the bedding in this barn this morning. Uh, first though, we gotta get all the ladies up in the holding area and Dima's in the parlor this morning and he's gonna start milking them. And then we gotta scrape all of the manure out of the beds if there is any. Fortunately, sometimes cows will uh, crap in the beds and we gotta rake that out by hand. And once that's done, we can clean the manure alleys and after that, we can then go ahead and finish putting that sand bedding in the beds here. I always get asked, man, why do you use sand bedding? Uh, versus straw or sawdust shavings, a more conventional bedding. My battery just died first thing this morning, but I uh, grabbed a new one. So the reason why we use sand bedding and not an organic material like sawdust or straw is that's why, uh, because they're organic and bacteria seems to grow a lot quicker in that type of bedding. Whereas sand is inorganic and you see a lot less bacteria growth happening in the sand beds and that less bacteria that you have in your beds the better uh, there's less bacteria on the cow's udder and her teat ends and you just get higher quality milk uh, that's the idea behind it anyway but for us specifically you guys see in the last couple videos all we got to do for this bedding is scoop it out of a hole like 400 meters away from the barn here and you can't really get any cheaper bedding than that we do it with the wheel loader and a silage truck even bailing our own straw off of the fields is probably more expensive than getting this free sand bedding for us. So this is just the way that it works for us, um, but still we like the sand bedding. Awesome, beds are all bedded up on this side. There's just one more row on the west side of the barn for group two that we got to bed up. Dean will do that, he'll scrape the next group. For me, straight to the parlor now. the MX-285 here, we're gonna hook it up to the bail wagon. Just gotta get some stuff out of the way, then we get that tractor lined up. Well, we pretty much got her hooked up. I just wanna rip by the shop, clean these hydraulic hoses off before we put them in the tractor. You see this bunch of dust and crap on them. That always happens when you just park it outside. But for the rest, should be good to go. Well, this thing's pretty much ready to go. I just need a controller wire, which is in the versatile, not in this tractor. That's a wire that switches some hydraulics for that bail wagon. It's like a controller for it. And uh, the versatile is in the field doing some more cultivating. So looks like I'm gonna go drive out to the field. Well, I am out in the field looking for a versatile with a cultivator, but I don't see a versatile with a cultivator. Miriam was doing it, but I guess she went back to the yard and I didn't see the tractor back at the yard. So back to the yard we go. Well, found the versatile and we got what we needed. So this is the little switch that I just got out of the versatile there. Basically you can control the left side of the bail wagon or the right side of the bail wagon. So then you can switch the arms and still just run it with one hydraulic. 
This bail wagon is made for a tractor that can run on only two hydraulics. Of course, this MX-285, it actually has four hydraulics or auxiliary ports or whatever you want to call them. Uh, but this bail wagon is made with this thing so you can run it on two. And um, yeah, that's why you need this thing. But now that we got it, we should be good to go. I didn't take the duals off of the MX-285. I'm hoping that the tire isn't going to be in the way from that arm picking up the bail. You can see maybe it would be. Uh, we'll see how it goes though in the field and if we need to we can always take the duels off figure it'd be lazy and not just try a load without doing it so we're picking up some canola bales in the canola field here uh that arm is able to pick up the bales actually pretty good with the duels on you can see it's got like two foot of clearance so that's awesome i did not feel like taking those duels off today So this field that we're picking bales from right now, it was a canola field and the canola was actually a cover crop for the alfalfa. Uh, we just wanted to get something off of this field so we planted canola, but we wanted this field to be alfalfa so then you um, you never really get a good catch of alfalfa out here your first year. If you just plant alfalfa, you're probably just riding this field off for that entire year and the next year you'll be able to harvest the crop from it. So to avoid wasting an entire year with all these acres, uh, you plant the cover crop over top of it and uh, that was canola this year. So the alfalfa is actually looking pretty good in this field. You can see quite a bit of it everywhere. This is some little alfalfa plants, but it's pretty consistent throughout the entire field. This regrowth of canola is just insane though. If I'm being honest, I'm not really ever one to uh, keep the windows clean on equipment. But uh, this is just no longer any more fun. So I figured to swing by the parlor, grab that fire hose and clean these windows off. still a couple streaks in there but it's a lot better well, let's put this load on the ground uh, you always want to haul bales when it's dry if it's kind of rainy kind of moist weather and the ground's a little bit damp you'll put these bales on the ground and that seems kind of fine but uh, even if there's a little bit of moisture it's gonna freeze when winter comes and when you try to pick these bales up in the winter time they'll be ice to the ground and the bottom part of the bale, the bottom part of the net wrap will just stay on the ground. You'll pull the rest of the bale away and it makes a massive mess. You always want to haul bales and at least set them down permanently where you want to leave them for a long time when it's dry. Otherwise, you're going to end up with some pretty gnarly problems in the winter time. bales off of that canola field slash alfalfa field now i'm gonna go to a field that's pretty far away so i want to put the hazard lights on the bale wagon on we just gotta fold them out they just give you the option to fold those away because when you back up to a row of bales you might hit these on there and snap them off that happened on our old one so Usually we'll just leave them folded back, but since uh, we're going on the road and the sun's almost down, put them on. It's what they're there for. Well, we finished hauling bales for this evening. Uh, we picked up 10 bales from like four miles away from the farm, so it's pitch black now. Uh, got back just in time, but uh, that is going to be it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.